here's the backpack. Carried everything I needed with me. Got a tripod that I was able to strap on. This is going to be my tripod desk. Beautiful little invention by Danny Samuels. What I'll be painting on today is a Cintiq Companion. Here's the pen. Got plenty of space here for little gadgets, a little bit of food, some water. Got the camera, and of course, in the side, Cintiq Companion. Yeah, it was beautiful. The main problem with Cintiq Companion that I'm going to have here is that the screen has so much glare and reflection that I might not be able to see perfectly, but we'll work with it. So this antique companion doesn't come with a keyboard. It's a little bit of a downfall, but I got this Razor Tartarus keypad. I programmed it with all of my Photoshop shortcuts, and it's pretty dang easy to use. The battery may last us about three to four hours outside, so I brought this little guy for some extra juice. Hopefully it'll last us through the day. And we're in. Welcome to Photoshop, everybody. This is my setup for the day. I'm working on a 12-inch screen, so not a lot of real estate for drawing, um, but I think it's going to work out. The first thing I like to do with this white canvas is get rid of all the white. You saw I drew out the general shapes of the logs, the crossing branches, uh, and somewhat of the path, uh, and I jump right into color. The way that I do that is I get rid of all of that white just by bringing in some old paintings of mine. Uh, it's something I started doing within the last couple of months or year or so. Uh, and it's actually really helped a lot because most of the time when you're starting out a painting, you're bringing in all this new color, you're trying to figure it out. Maybe you don't even know what the colors are going to be. Um, but it helps a lot for me to throw this stuff in because there's a lot of texture. Um, and as long as I pick portfolio pieces that have the same uh, color scheme going on, uh, I end up in a pretty good spot. Uh, so the second thing you saw me do was start to bring in some of those greens, and basically I was able to do it with a overlay layer, um, and not just one color of green, uh, but something you have to notice is when the light hits the grass, uh, it, it tints towards the yellow, it tints towards the color of the sun. Um, so in that overlay layer, I was using sunny greens, uh, and then the cool shadow greens that lean towards the blue just a little bit more, uh, and just from there I'm able to get a color difference that was a little bit varied from the, uh, the old paintings that I brought in. Um, and as soon as I can do that, I can kind of bring out the gesture of, of what I see in front of me. The color blotches uh, are starting to appear, um, and I can begin rendering. I've got a few brushes that I'm using today. Uh, mainly, I'm just kind of fumbling with the texture one just to see if I can get something going on. Um, but it definitely helps to have that little bit of texture going at the beginning. You'll see I switched to a more painterly brush uh, later on, but uh, it's interesting to be a, a painter who goes out into the landscape and you bring the oil paint, you got the whole setup. Uh, this is the first time I've ever brought a computer out into the wild. And Cintiq Companion's been pretty dang great for that. Uh, I don't think I had any issues. Maybe the battery did die once on me. Had to go home, but um, it's a lot cleaner than <laughs> bringing out the oil painting and, and setting up and cleaning up later on. Uh, so I had a pretty good time. So the painting is taking place on UC Santa Cruz's property. This is a college in Santa Cruz, California, um, like two hours south of San Francisco. Uh, such a beautiful place. It reminds me of home in Sarasota, Florida, where you've got the beach, you know, right, right next to you. But the most amazing thing that just blew me away about this town was uh, two minutes up the road, you're, you're in the forest. And compared to Sarasota, Florida, with the palm trees and the beach, I mean, it's so beautiful, but it's so flat. So getting to go up into the mountains was really great for me. Um, I think that's kind of why I chose this place as being a, a main painting spot. We took this little path. It's definitely not part of the normal path, but uh, kind of the hobo version. Uh, we went down there, and, and several spots really caught my eye. So packed up my bag a couple days later um, and, and went out here for this little scene. This is kind of the first time I've ever seen this type of landscape. Um, so it's really good for me to build my vocabulary. Um, I've worked for some projects where I've had to do this type of landscape, and it's always Google Images. You find um, you find the reference that you need, but being there and seeing it alive and watching it move, um, there's there's bugs and animals and all these great things that you wouldn't see in a Google image. 
Um, and just spending hours out there is really good for you. Uh, I imagine I could come up with lots of this information on my own. Uh, I did finish this painting on an airplane, so the the image, the memory of all this type of uh, life really stuck in my head and I was able to pull it off and it, it kind of just looked like I was still painting. Um, but it's definitely a good thing to do. My favorite part about painting, I'd say, is being able to get out and observe the world. Um, I would consider myself a plain air painter uh, more than a concept art painter, um, which is really great uh, for me. I, I prefer the old tradition of, of plain air painting. Uh, and so when I approach my concept art jobs, I do it very much like how I'm doing right here. I, I want it to appear as though uh, it's been lived in, and I've, I've spent a lot of time watching it move and evolve and the lights changing, and there's, there's a bit of life that you get uh, in a gallery space where you're looking at a fine artist's painting that w will usually never happen in a digital painter's work, unless, of course, they spent quite a bit of time in the landscape. Um, so for me, I have several buddies. We go out and we, we paint the Florida scenes. Uh, we try to do it once a week. Um, and it's, it's really healthy, I'd say, just to get off the computer and, and start to observe. So you're seeing some techniques that I'm using here. There's lots of lasso tool. That's what that little shape thing that I keep making. And basically, it masks off places that I only want to paint. So uh, if I need to make like a sharp diagonal or something like that to, to cut the tree, that's basically what you're seeing me use there. And that's a concept art trick that, of course, you can't do with oil paint. But um, it, it definitely helps when you're on a time budget. The next tool that I'll use is called Liquify, where basically you just kind of smudge things around uh, to kind of fix the shape a little bit better. Um, and the last thing you've seen me use is kind of got that grid on it. It's a transform tool called Warp, and it's in the Transform menu. You can see, like, I'm, I'm rarely picking the color. Um, a lot of the mess that I made, you can still see a tiger in there. Uh, a lot of that mess brought me all the color that I needed, really. Um, so every now and again, I'll pick a green. It's I've got so many greens on here. I'll pick a green and I'll adjust it just slightly to be a slightly different green. Uh, because every blade of grass is facing a different direction and getting a different sense of lighting. Uh, it's got a different sense of bounce light. And if it's in the shadow, it's going to be different than what's in the light. Um, so there's there's lots to think about when you're in oil paint. You're mixing these colors. You have to think about this kind of stuff. Um, and it makes a lot more sense than having, you know, 10 colors that you've picked and you're going to use that the whole time. Because grass isn't green. It's gray. It's sometimes orange. It's dirty brown and it's cool green. And there's just so much life in it. And I think most of that knowledge comes from spending a lot of time in the landscape. A big challenge here, uh, you would think at least, is the t the change of color and light here. Uh, basically, what I was taking advantage of was every time the sun came out, it would hit a new spot. Uh, as long as I enjoyed it, I would capture it and I'd stick it in my painting, um, which I think really helps. Honestly, uh, rather than having a stagnant environment, uh, sometimes you can be disturbed by the light changing, but I'm in this forest, and <laughs> every time the light comes through, I'm, I'm inspired more and more. So I'll pick it up. I'll stop what I'm doing. If the lighting's really nice, I'm going to go to that, that light, and I'm going to paint it in, or at least the gesture of what I saw the light being. Uh, and I can do the rest from imagination, or wait for it to come back. Uh, so a lot of this, this scene is pretty dull. It's like a, a neutral kind of space until the light comes in, and it's blasting the sand which is reflecting really hot light into the trees. Uh, and that's where you can see a lot of the reds coming through in, in the bounce light. But yeah, so painting this <laughs> stroke by stroke is definitely one of the things that I want to do. It, it reminds me of how I have to do painting uh, in oil. And uh, instead of using texture brushes, you know, there's so many grass things that I could use to, to simulate what grass looks like. Um, but why not go out and paint the personality of each blade of grass? I think it, it definitely opens up your vocabulary, and you get to see the personality of organisms in the wild. Uh, and it's something you bring in your paintings, and it really brings everything to life. Whether or not the paintings that you're working on are realistic, or there's some alien environment, um, you get the idea from this, this realistic world. Um, so I suggest, if you don't have a portable device, 
Just go out and draw and, and stare. Look at what's going on in, in the wild and, and watch it breathe, watch it live. It's really easy to see how, how alive it is in those speedy videos that I've, I've put up. Um, everything's moving, everything's, even the light is, is breathing, I'd say. So uh, it definitely helps to bring life into the paintings. As for plain air painting, this is definitely the first time I've ever gone out uh, and done a, a, a real good job at uh, looking at something really complex uh, and trying to translate it into a, a, a digital painting. Usually, if you're working in oil, a lot of the texture can be done with splashes of oil and, and you know brush stroke that's kind of dragged across the canvas. Uh, and you're splashing these colors and you're getting the general idea of of what's going on there. And it's the same, like I, I think of both processes as I'm painting at all times. So if I'm on a computer, it, it really has no difference than when I'm out uh, painting in oil. I think one problem that I always had as a student was blocking out all the blades of grass at the beginning. So you, you look at this space, you're in this world and you're like, all I see is realistic trees. I see the texture on the trees, all the leaves, and all the, the you know, there's just too much information there. And I think uh, the way that I learned how to ignore that uh, is a technique called squinting down. Basically, you close your eyes really, really deep, and you see just barely through your eyelashes. And as soon as you're able to blur your vision and get rid of all the details, I think you're going to be in a pretty good position. Uh, things really start to come together, and you can see the masses, the shapes, the values. It all kind of works out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I had a super fun time in California. I can't wait to get back. If you have any ideas for what you'd like to see in a future demo, please let me know in the comments below. Maybe you'd like me to slow down these stinking videos so you could see something. I'd be happy to do that in the future as well. Head on over to andrewtheo.com to see more paintings of mine. Please subscribe on YouTube and follow me on Tumblr. I'll be sure to post more demonstrations as they come along. Appreciate you guys hanging out this whole time. This has been Andrew Theophilopoulos, companion in the woods. See ya!